Okay, so we've already seen how to how we can um, increment by our variables or decrement our variables by one or two or however we would like. And now we're going to see the use of that here. So today is a big day for us because we're going to learn how to repeat lines of code if we want to by using the while loop. We can say while. So notice that while is a keyword here. And it's going to take an opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis. Now, like the if statement, it's going to take an opening and closing braces. Unless we use just one line of code. That same rule applies here. We don't need the braces if we're only using one line of code. But chances are we're not going to be using one line of code. So we can always put the braces there anyway. Now, inside here, it's going to go a Boolean statement here. So I want to make a variable. Oh. Yeah, that tricked me. I hate it when it does that. I mean, I, it happens to me all the time, more than enough. Int a equals, and let's say we set it equal to zero here. And I want to say, all right, well, I want a, well, a is less than five. So is this a true statement? This will be true, so whatever's in here is going to be executed to the screen. And then, so whatever's inside this block of code. So let, let's just run this here, and then I'll explain it here. This printed off my name five times to the screen. And I only have one C out statement here. So let's run through this carefully. So first we have an A is equal to zero here. Now, if this value here is true, we're just going to execute this code here. Now if this is false here, it's just going to skip the whole entire block of code and move on to the next statement here. So let me show you. Now since we already seen it repetitive here, so just like the just like the if statement here, the while statement will will execute this code here, similar to the if here. However, the only thing the only difference between the if statement and the while statement at when, if we just change this to an if here, if we just turn this to an if here, it would only execute once. And then a would equal 1 at the end of the program. Now with the while statement, or the while loop, when we get to the end of the loop here, this will jump back here and still check if it's true. This will repeat over and over and over until this statement becomes false. In this case, when when a equals 5 here, because we're going to increment it over and over and over. So right here, first time we increment it, we print our name to the screen. And then we add 1 to the value of a. And that's what this line here does. Then when we get to the end of the loop, we jump back here and check to see if this statement is true. If it's still true. Well, it's still true. It's going to be true 5 times until a becomes 5. Then we're going to break out of it. So let's say... I output the value just a here. <clears throat> so first we output a because 0 is less than 5. We output the value 0 here, then we add 1 to it. Then we output 1, 2, 3, and 4. When we output 4 here, a equals 5 right now. Then we check back here. Is 5 less than 5? Nope, it's a false statement. Okay, so what if we did less than or equal to? We'll run through this loop six times, which will print out 0 through 5. And there's six numbers here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we get the 6 here. 6 less than or equal to 5. That's a false statement here. And we don't have to increment our variable by 1. Let's say we did 25 here. We can make this count as much as we want here. And let's say we count into 10,000 here. And uh, it can count pretty fast. It counts to 10,000 in a couple seconds here. And so we can we can go to 100,000 if we want to. But the point is that it does count. And um, you know this can be boring here, watching it count over and over. But um, it's counting. And we're almost halfway, but I'm going to close it halfway because I don't feel like watching it 
count to 10,000. And we don't have to, let's say we just did 100 here. Let's say we did a 500. We can also double our value of A each time. We can say A is equal to 2 times A here. Now watch this. This will be an infinite loop. What's 2 times 0? This is going to be 0 here. This is called an infinite loop here because no matter what, A is always going to equal 0 and we'll, this statement will always be true. Regardless of what happens here, we're going to keep on cycling through here and it will always be true and that's an infinite loop. And that can be bad. It might cause, you know, if you go online and your computer freezes or, or you're waiting for something to happen, that's probably because somewhere in the program there could be an infinite loop somewhere. And they can be frustrating when you're, when you can't do anything, because right now we can't, no matter what we do, we can't, we can't terminate this program unless we terminate it the hard way by clicking X. But what if we set our A equal to 1? That should resolve the issue. And we'll print out 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Let's say we did 10,000 this time. Or we can do 100,000. And we'll double up our numbers here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 6. We just double up. And so that's just a, a way to use the while loop here. We can um, use repetitive code here. And we can also say A equals 100 here. And we can say A is equal to A divided by 2. And then we can see out A. And then divide it by 2 each time. Or when we can say A equals this here. And as long as, let's just say A is greater than 0. And it divides it divides it by two each time. And notice when we get to the odd numbers here, it still uses those rules here. It truncates. Remember, if we had seven divided by two, it's three point five. Well, it's just going to go like right here. If we take seven, we divide it by two, and it's going to go to three. Because remember, three seven three point five, it does not round up or down. It just cuts off the whole decimal. So even if we had three point nine nine nine, it would still cut it off to three. And we divide, and one divided by two is zero. So this is just a way to um, use loops here. And this is just an introduction to some while loops. And um, we'll come back to while loops later on. So that's an intro here, but I want to show you something else in the next tutorial.